before we go into chapter four. Do I like doing the supplemental questions? I brought you those extra questions last time. Is that okay? I'll probably bring in some extras for these. Uh, we're trying to grow, like I said, the course is as strong as the amount of material that we cover, because LSU has done this thing where they've expanded their physics to three semesters, so they cover it less in each semester. Uh, so we're trying to go in greater depth. So I'll probably bring you out some more problems for us to work on the third day that we do uh, projectile motion. But we'll work through several examples today. Um, and have y'all done the lab yet where you shoot the spring gun? You do that. You, some of you have done You did it yesterday, right, Daniel? Those of you in the Thursday lab, I think we'll do it tomorrow. Um, let's see. So projectile motion, it's a lot like what we did in Chapter 2, except in Chapter 2 it was just one-dimensional motion. And now we're dealing with motion in two dimensions. And then in those dimensions, we have a couple different things that describe them. Uh, in the horizontal direction, uh, the acceleration is equal to zero. So that's AX is equal to zero. And because of that, VX is constant. And then, of course, in the vertical direction, the acceleration, AY, is equal to negative 10 meters per second squared. And we can treat the horizontal and the vertical motions completely separately. So uh, we can imagine as if they are happening just uh, completely apart from one another. I have this little thing here that shows how things fall. And so this is a, it's a little spring loaded deal. And it will um, put a ball here and a ball here. And then when I shoot it, this one will shoot the ball out and this one will just drop the ball, right? And so in one case, the case over here, the ball will have uh, an x component of velocity, that is a component of velocity that's shooting it out directly forward, but then it'll also drop in the y direction. But in this case, the, uh, the ball will just drop, right? So the ball over here will shoot out in a trajectory, a projectile path, but it also drops, so it's gonna shoot out and sort of fall down to the ground. And this one, the ball will just drop. So which do you think then will um, will hit first? Will it be the one that travels out and falls towards the ground, or will it be this one that just drops straight down? Okay, let's see. That seems right, right? Because this one's going to travel a lesser distance, right? It's just going to fall to the ground. So let's see. So. Um, shot outward is traveling a further distance, you can imagine that those x and y components of the motion are completely separate. So they're both falling at the same rate as they drop down. The only difference is that one of them is shot outward. And we're given that, that uh, extra little bump in the x direction. But we can just forget about that when we're thinking about the y motion. They both fall at the same rate in the y direction. And the only difference is that, that one of them is shot out. This is our hand up right so uh, as we're working through these projectile motion problems, uh, the component of the motion that defines how long it's in the air is which? The x or the y component? The projectile is in the air for a certain amount of time, right? Which uh, part of the trajectory or which part of the velocity defines how long that is? Is it going to be the y component of the velocity or the x component of the velocity? It's going to be the y component of velocity, right? So the y component, as we're going through these problems, 
uh, it will be the y component that will define how long it's in the air. The y motion always defines how long it's in the air. So if it goes up further, if it goes up higher into the air, it's going to be in the air for a longer amount of time. And if it goes up uh, a shorter distance in the air, it'll be in the air for a shorter amount of time. We'll see that in just a bit. Um, and also, just sort of as an aside, to get maximum range, you need what angle you think for your trajectory? You need 45 degrees. You can try this at home. Like if you have a garden hose, you can aim it, sort of go through the angles, have the water coming out the end of the hose, and go through the angles. You might have done this already. Have you all done this? Yeah, see how far, like if you're trying to shoot your brother or sister with it, then you want to get the maximum range. And if you go too high, the water will, will come back towards you. And if you go too low, of course, you'll just go straight into the ground. But the, the angle that gets you maximum range is going to be 45 degrees. So an angle of 45 degrees gives maximum range. This also comes up a lot in basketball because you're, you know, basketball is full of projectile motion. And so we'll work some problems later that are about basketball in particular. But I have a little clip here. This is really just sort of for your own interest. I think it's kind of interesting. This is a, an audio clip. It's a physics professor telling basketball players how to play basketball, which is kind of lame when you think about it, but it's still kind of interesting. He's done some work to figure out what is the appropriate angle for the free throw shot. And so let's just listen to this. As I said, it's just sort of for your own interest. I think that uh, like every athletic team should have a physics professor on staff to help them with things like their angle. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so uh, if we're looking at projectile motion, we just sort of look at a basic projectile that is something that starts here with a certain velocity, v naught, with an angle theta, and ends at the same position. And we'll look at some different variations of projectile motion problems, and they're endless, the number of variations. So we'll work, try to work through a lot of variety of different problems. Uh, they're not endless. There are a limited number, but still, there can be lots of variations. Uh, but the basic idea is that as you're as you, have you, as you have an object, say a soccer ball that you kick, it initially has a velocity in the y direction and it has a velocity in the x direction. Remember these are our components of the vectors. We can calculate those like we did in the previous section on vectors. Uh, v naught x, for example, would be v naught times what? Cosine theta, right, and v naught y is v naught times sine theta. Uh, as these go along, v naught x will remain the same the entire time. Because remember, the acceleration in the x direction equals zero. And v naught y, on the other hand, because the acceleration in the y direction is negative 10, it will decrease initially. At the top, it goes to zero, and then it increases in the negative direction. So that whatever velocity you had at the beginning in the y direction, you have that at the end in the y direction, but in the negative direction. So this is just like what we had before when we were throwing things up in the air and they were returning to our hand. That is that problem. You were just adding an x component to the velocity. Uh, I want to show you a little video. And then uh, if you're in the lab, we did a lab on this where we used Logger Pro for video analysis. But uh, I want to show you a video, and then we'll work through with the Logger Pro, and I'll show you how to do that uh, if you're not in the lab. Uh, this video, the first part of it is just sort of for fun. This is a family that lost their home in a fire, and they have two, uh, I don't know, sort of 20 something year old boys, college age boys, college age guys, and they want to recreate all the home videos that they lost in the fire. And so this first clip is just them trying to recreate the home video that they had, and it's just kind of funny. And then in the second part, uh, it shows him playing basketball with his dad. And we're going to look at, at one of the shots that he makes, and we'll plot out the motion. Um, the x and the y motion and the x and the y velocity. So let's just watch it first. Make sure I have Logger Pro on here. It's supposed to. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we're going to look at uh, look at this.
this was one of your options for honors credit. Uh, I don't remember if anybody in here is doing this for honors credit, but uh, you can do this where you actually go to a sporting event and record a uh, video of the sporting event, volleyball, basketball, soccer, or whatever, and then you can analyze the motion of the players or of the balls or, or whatever is moving within the event. Uh, it's also a good project for a high school student, like for a science fair project. I think this would make a great project. So uh, if you want to do something like this, just let me know. I can give you the software. Or there are some actually free versions of this that you can that you can download. Um, but first, I'm just going to open up the video. And then I'll find a nice frame where he's shooting. See, I think it was important. Basketball. Let's do some layups and some foul sheets. Let's make a basketball star. All right, we'll stop there. Now, uh, we're gonna, so we have a good frame here where he's about to shoot the ball. I'm gonna get it right after he leaves his hands. Uh, first, I want to set my origin here. I set my origin there. That tells the software that that's x and y equals zero. And then I want to set my scale. This just tells the software what is a meter or what is two meters. This dad isn't quite two meters, so let's see. I'll put in. Uh, he's about maybe 1.8 meters tall. We'll say so a little under six foot. And then we can uh, plot out the motion of the ball. And here I'm just going to click on the ball, and each time I click it, it advances at a frame. And in the software, it sets uh, a distance to a pixel value, so each pixel is worth a certain amount of distance. And so it, it can plot out the ball's motion. Notice that the, the dots get closer together at the top. That's where it goes the slowest, because what happens to the velocity in the y direction at the top? It becomes zero. Now, it still has an x motion, but nonetheless, that's where its velocity at the top is, is slowest. All right, we'll stop right there. Now, I can look at the motion, and you have copies of these in your... Uh, in your uh, book. But if I look at the X motion, notice this is a position versus time graph. And you can still see some of these types of graphs on your uh, on your test. There'll be multiple choice, kind of like we did before, uh, describe the position versus time or the velocity versus time for projectiles. But what is uh, interesting about this graph? What is it about this graph that describes the motion? It what? It's a linear graph, right? So its slope here is constant. That means that the velocity in the x direction is also constant, right? Or we could say again that the acceleration in the x direction is zero. If I look at the y, the y motion, let's see. Initially, I had a a big slope here that's positive. That slope gets less and less until at the top it becomes zero. Remember, the velocity in the y direction goes to zero at the top. And then it begins to increase in the negative direction. So that describes my y motion. And then I can also show the x velocity here. There's a lot of scatter here, but uh, notice that the, the y axis, which is the x velocity, is fairly constant. So we're saying then that our x velocity is roughly, you know, in between the scatter, about 3 or 3.2 meters per second. And if I show my y velocity, it should look a little better. Uh, my y velocity. Uh, decreases, or excuse me, it starts out big and positive, it goes to zero, and then it begins to increase in the negative direction. Now the slope of this line should be what? It should be negative, it is negative, but it, have, it should have a certain value, what should that be? Negative 10. Now let's just check that, it sort of depends how I set my scale. I can do a linear fit, I get about negative 8, so I, I, my fit might have been a little off, but uh, that is where I set the scale in the video. All right. Uh, so 
Don't forget how to interpret these velocity and position versus time graphs. We had that sort of ad nauseum last chapter, but it could come back a little bit this time. All right, uh, let's work through a problem. Let's see, I actually have another clip I want to show you. This is from Gone in 60 Seconds. Have y'all seen that before? It's that flick where Nicolas Cage, his bro he plays Memphis Reigns, and his brother is kidnapped. And in order to get his brother out safely, he has to like go steal a bunch of cars. I forget a dozen, two dozen cars or whatever. Fifty, fifty cars, all in one night, I think. And so anyway, at the end, he steal he has to steal this Mustang Shelby GT, I think it was. Um, and he's trying to get away from the cops. That's what's facing him. And it comes to a traffic jam on the bridge. But oh, what does he have there? There's a ramp. There's like this uh, tow truck. This, that cocked up, and so he's able to jump over the traffic jam. So as we watch this, we want to think about what we need in order to find his range, that is his maximum x distance, uh, and then also how high does he go. So uh, think about what's the information that we need. It's all there that, that we need, and then uh, we'll work through the problem. This is a pretty basic projectile motion problem. Um, what's the first thing we need? Right. We need to know his initial speed. Anybody get it? What was it? Well, I know his initial, like, just as he hits the ramp. So I have this situation. Yeah, so, you know, he, he follows this motion, and I need to know his initial speed. And it, it looked like it was about 95. We'll just say it was 100 miles an hour. It showed his speedometer. I don't think I've ever been 100 miles an hour. But anyway, he was going about 100 miles an hour. And uh, something else that we need to know. Okay, we want to find his distance. Yeah, so we're going to calculate the distance. Something that we need in order to calculate. Okay, yeah, the time. But we don't really get that from the clip because it's sort of, well, maybe we get it from the clip. But let's say that we don't. Uh, so what? Right, we need to know his angle of the trajectory. So uh, what do you think the angle was? Let's say it's 45 because that will give us that maximum range. It looked to be a pretty steep angle. Maybe it was less than 45 because 45 is an awfully steep angle. I mean, that's a ramp like this. So 45 is a big slope. But let's say that, that, yeah, that we have 100 miles an hour at 45 degrees. I think it might be a little less than that. So we have his initial speed. It's 45 is 100 miles an hour. We need to convert that into meters per second. On the next test, probably not going to see a lot of conversion. You might have some simple metric conversions, like centimeters to meters, but you can sort of consider the British conversions over. Like, you're not going to have to convert between different systems of units. But let's do it here. Uh, one mile, 1609 meters, and one hour is 3,600 seconds. And let's see, I get, when I do that, I get about 45 meters per second. 45 meters per second, and then we've already said that the angle theta is 45 degrees. So usually when you have the angle and the initial velocity, you'll need to calculate the components of the velocity right off. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll find our V naught X and our V naught Y. Uh, let's see, V naught times, which, it, which there are two trig functions, right? Sine and cosine, and V naught X is which of them? It's the cosine, right? So V naught times cosine of 45. That's uh, 45 meters per second. It's cosine of 45 degrees. And I find that that's 32 meters per second. All right, we know that V naught Y will be the same because cosine is equal to the sine of 45. That's so going to be V naught sine of 45 which is also equal to 32 meters per second. So our velocity vector is 45 meters per second. And then it has x and y components, an x component of 32 and a y component of 32. So we can split up that, that vector into its x and its y components. Next thing that we want to do is to find the time. And how do we find the time? 
So just like what we did when we throw something up in the air, right? I remember we used that that fact that what happens at the top. Right, so when it goes up in the top, it stops, and then we can find the, uh, the time. So uh, we use the fact that V at the top in the y direction is equal to zero. And then we basically have three equations that govern projectile motion. I'm just going to sort of sketch them over here, write them over here. I know that x is equal to uh, V naught x times t. Now, there is this other term, right, 1 half ax t squared, but since ax is equal to 0, I can just leave that off because that term goes to 0. So I just have this, this first part of that equation. Uh, then I also have y equals v naught y times t plus 1 half ay t squared. And then I also have vy equals v naught y plus a y times t. I have another equation. I'm not writing it here, but let me just, I'll sort of write it down here. And that is that v x is equal to v naught x plus a x times t. But a x is zero, so that term goes away. So basically all this is saying is that the velocity in the x direction doesn't change. That the velocity in the x direction is the same as the initial velocity in the x direction. So that doesn't change at all. Alrighty. Okay, so uh, those are my three equations. And sort of as we're going through projectile motion problems, they're going to be a little more complicated than the one-dimensional problems. But basically, we'll be looking at these three equations and saying, what are my knowns and what are my unknowns? Right? And uh, trying to find out what it is that we're, we want to know about the problem. Uh, something that I'm not writing here, but it's, it's sort of implied here, here, and here is that these are dependent not only on the initial velocity, but also on what? OK. Uh, yeah, I think, that, I think you're saying what I want, but I want for a particular variable. But the, these are dependent upon v naught, and what else? Three color? Theta, right, the, the angle. So v naught x is v naught cosine theta. I think that's what you're trying to say. Yeah, just that. All right, so uh, let's return back to this. So my v top in the y direction is equal to 0. Uh, I know that v y is equal to v naught y plus a y t. Uh, that's 0 equals, what was it, 32 meters per second. Hey, Brittany. Minus 10 times t top. And so t top is negative 32 over 10, so that's 3.2 seconds. That means he's in the air for how long? From the time he launches to the time he hits the ground. You that's right, you double it. So his total time in the air is 6.4 seconds. All right, because uh, remember when he gets to the top, this is 3.2 seconds because it's symmetrical, because he's beginning and ending at the same place. Then we can say that this time is twice that, or 6.4 seconds. Projectile motion problems won't always be symmetrical. Or we'll work through some problems where they aren't symmetrical, where they start at one place and they end at another place, or they start up high and they end low. You have the test in lab, actually, where you shoot it out and it comes down to a certain point, or you will do it tomorrow. Um, if you just want to compare that in the clip, that clip lasts about seven seconds. So I think that the clip is actually pretty on target as far as uh, as being real life. So it takes about the right amount of time. Now we can find the range. And if we go back to these equations that we drew out for projectile motion, we want to know what is x right here. So we're going to take our x in part of the velocity and multiply it times the time. So our x component of the velocity was, I think, 32, 32 meters per second times 6.4 seconds. And I get about 210 meters, which I think is kind of far. 
that, that clip looks more along the lines of 100, 150 meters. But remember, I think that we also may have overestimated our, our angle. So if I have a lower angle on that on that uh, truck, what's it going to do on that flat bed? Yeah, what's it going to do to the range? It's going to decrease the range. Remember, because 45 degrees is your maximum range. And if you lower that angle, it's going to hit at a, at a more secure spot, a nearer spot. We can also find the speed at impact. Um, I mean, we know what a speed at impact is, right? What is it? 100 miles an hour, right? Assuming that there's no loss of speed, no forces acting on them as he goes along, no air resistance. But let's just sort of go through the, the mechanics of it. Uh, I can find his VY is equal to V naught Y plus AY times T. That's going to be 32 meters per second minus 10 meters per second squared because that's a negative acceleration times uh, 6.4. Well, that's going to be 30, negative 32. All right. Remember our, our picture, right, of our projectile? Over here, it has a certain V naught Y. Over here, it has that same speed, but in the opposite direction. And that's what we're seeing here. And we can calculate that just by this function, which describes how the velocity changes with time. And since we know the time at the end, we can calculate then what is the velocity at the end. Remember, that's just a function. And it describes the velocity at all points in time. And so if we know the time at any point in the trajectory, then we can find its velocity. Uh, then we can also find Vx, which is just equal to V naught x, which was equal to 32 meters per second. And then if we want to know the, the magnitude of the speed, V, we do the Pythagorean theorem, because these are vectors. Negative 32 squared plus 32 squared equals uh, 45. All right, this is just like we did previously uh, when we were finding the components. This is the reverse of it. So now I can find that this is 45 meters per second. And then, of course, if my vectors would look like this, my Vy would be in this direction. My Vx would be in this direction. And so this angle would be 45 degrees below the x-axis. Right, which is exactly the opposite of what we had before for our initial flow. Right. We can also find our y height, that is, in our trajectory, if we want to know how high he goes, what is y equal to, we can just take that position function, y equals v naught y t plus one half a t squared. This function that describes the position as a function of time. So at any time, I can put in and find his y position. What is the time here? It's 3.2, right? That's t top, 3.2 seconds. And so that's going to be 32 meters per second times 3.2 seconds uh, plus 1 half of negative 10. That's my acceleration. That's 3.2 seconds squared. Let's see, I don't have this. I get 51 meters. Saying that he goes about 51 meters high, which again I think that's kind of uh, kind of an overestimate. But remember, if he goes at a lower angle here, not only is he going to get a shorter range, but he'll also get a, a shorter height. Okay. So by our assumption, I think the 45 degrees is the center of the wall, probably more like 30 to 40 degrees. All right. That's a pretty basic projectile motion problem. That's about as easy as they'll get. 
Uh, in fact, the ones on your exam will probably be slightly more complicated. We might even work in, we'll, we'll look and see what we do in a couple of days. We might even work in like some trig identities and what have you. Y'all familiar with, when I say trig identity, y'all know what that means? Okay, I'll, I'll help you with that. We'll, we'll review that and what have you. I know it's probably been a while. Let's try some, some of these just for practice. So a soccer ball is kicked at an angle of 30 degrees. If the ball requires one second to reach the goal, what is the initial velocity? I'm just going to write down some things that we know up here. Y'all keep working. We've got about another minute, okay? Uh, let's just go about 10 more seconds. I'm going to stop at 4.35. Four 4.35. Just guess if you don't know.
boy. Okay, let's see. We're all over the board here. Um, so here, I know that T top is equal to 0.5 seconds. So I can just say that V top, which I know equals 0, is equal to V naught Y plus A Y times T top. That is 0 equals uh, V naught times sine of 30 plus Ay, which is negative uh, 10 meters per second squared times 0.5 seconds. And so that's uh, V naught equals 5 over sine 30, which is 5 over a half, which is 10. So V naught is equal to 10 meters per second. That's what most of you put. Let's see. Yeah, nine of you put it. About half of you. All right. So D is the right answer here. Uh, don't forget with your sines and your cosines, the cosine of sixty equals sine of thirty equals one half. So, it's, especially if you're taking the MCAT. Are there any pre-meds in here? I don't think there are. But if you change your mind and decide to go to med school, like on the MCAT, they don't allow calculators. And so you have to know these trig functions. Uh, and cos the 60-30 triangle is a, is a common triangle. So you need to know that. All right, let's try this one. Uh, this one's like in the lab. You've had the lab or you will have it. Uh, I have this projectile. I'll fire it. The Y displacement is one meter. It has an initial speed of five meters per second. So this distance is one meter. This horizontal velocity is 5 meters per second. How far is it traveling in the x direction? Two steps to this problem. First, you have to find the time, and then you have to find the x displacement. First, you want to find your time. What motion will you consider to find the time? X or the Y motion? What, what direction? Right, the y, the y motion dictates how long the object is in the air. So you want to consider your Y motion to find the time, and then you can find your X displacement.
it shoot for about another minute or less. About 30 seconds. I stop at 450. right I think yeah B is right so first you want to find your time uh, we say that y is equal to v naught y t plus one half a y t squared this one's pretty simple to solve for time because v naught y is equal to zero otherwise you have to use the quadratic I'm not going to make you use the quadratic on the test so uh, I'll have the problem set up so you don't have to use it it just takes a long time to use the quadratic uh, and then I solve this for t so uh, t is equal to 2y over a. The square root of that, that's 2 times negative 1 meter over negative 10. The square root of that, that's square root of 1 over 5, which is 0.45 seconds. And then I can find my x displacement, which is vxt, uh, 5 meters per second times 0.45 seconds, uh, which gives me 2.3 meters. And so B is the right answer for that one. All right, let's see what we got next. We'll work through some other problems. This one's a pretty simple projectile motion problem. So if you're having difficulty with this, make sure that you, it'd probably be very useful for you to look at the homework before the next class. And then uh, if you have questions about the homework, we can address it then. Or we can also, uh, we're all going to look at some more difficult problems as well. Okay, so just make sure that you have these simple ones down before we come into the next class. Because we'll be looking at some more difficult problems then. Alright? How y'all feeling with this? Okay? I would look, I mean, you don't have to do anything. But yeah, I would look at the homework before next time. Alright? I think that will be beneficial. Especially if you're having trouble with these. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's do this quick thing. I'm not. I had a little clip. I'm not going to show it. But uh, imagine that you there's this clip of the X-15. The X-15 was a, a craft. You have this airplane. It's not an airplane, and it had another little airplane underneath it, and it dropped it. Uh, so this this uh, big airplane has a certain speed in this direction. And when it drops this little airplane, it keeps the same speed, all right? So it has the same speed. These two speeds are the same. But the only difference is that it starts dropping like that. So if I were to drop a package from a plane, which of these paths would it take? We'll see this next time in the concept test. But if I drop a package from a plane, uh, which of these paths does it take? A, B, C, D, or E? A few more seconds, I'll stop at 25. All right, excellent. B is the right answer. Uh, it takes this path because it has that same velocity in the x direction as it did before, and but it's going to be pulled down towards the earth by the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, coincidentally, each time I'm at a point in the trajectory, the plane up here will be at the same point, so the plane will be directly above it. All right, we'll try this problem next time. And as I said, either next time or the class period after that, I'll bring some supplemental problems, but I'll email that to you as a PDF, but I'll print it for you before I come to class. All right, guys, y'all have a good day. I'll see you on Friday. Okay, we're going to finish up the problems in the book next time in the concept test. We'll do those quicker questions. So uh, anyway, I'll see you then.